The LFO controller in the Watcher audio engine has always been a powerful and adaptable modulation source, but this year it's acquired a new superpower. As well as providing the usual waveforms and random sources, now the LFO has an integrated Euclidean step sequencer. So in this video, we'll take a quick look at how that works and what you might want to do with it. For some time now, Watcher has had a Euclidean sequencer for melodic and rhythmic voice generation. The one in the LFO follows the same general format, but with some extra tweaks that make it more useful as a control signal generator. I've covered the melodic Euclidean sequencer and how it works in Watcher in an earlier video, so if you need a catch-up or a refresher, it might be a good idea to start there and then come back to this video later, because I won't repeat here what I've already included in that video. So, on that assumption, let's have a closer look. For the first part of this demo, I've set up an LFO to control the pitch of a tone generator. This is just going to drone at a fixed pitch and won't sound very interesting musically, but it is an easy way for you to hear what the LFO is actually doing. Later we can come back and look at some more musical uses. So if we look at the LFO drop-down selection, we can see there's a Euclidean option at the bottom. Select that, and the LFO is now in Euclidean step sequence operation. Now LFOs are usually bidirectional, they have both a negative and a positive phase, and this might not be how you want a step sequencer to behave. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to remove the negative phase of the signal, which I'll do by lifting the minimum level to zero. At the bottom of the LFO control panel are the parameters used for Euclidean sequencing. So we have the usual step, fill, rotation and repeat selection, plus the option to add ranges to those values for generative variations on your pattern. Notice that there are only eight steps in this sequencer. As it's a rhythmic sequencer, that's really all you need. The repeats and the rotation parameters provide enough variation to make it sound more extended and variable. Also, if you want more complex polyrhythms, it's very easy to combine two or more LFOs to generate those, which we'll cover in a bit later. So eight steps is a good building block. Each step lasts for one cycle of the LFO, so a one hertz LFO will have one step for every second. But for a lot of the time, it's probably better to sync the LFO to the mixed tempo. In this demo, that mixed tempo is 60 BPM, so I've synced it to four times that, meaning that each step will be one quarter note long. So let's take a look at how that plays out. At the moment, I have it set up to generate a square step, but at the bottom here, there are three sliders that allow you to adjust the ratio between the rise, hold and fall of the sequence of steps. If we play around with these, you should be able to see, and more importantly hear, what effect they have. In effect, these offer a mini contour shaper for each step. Now we can use the usual random levels checkbox in the LFO unit to give us steps of random height, but there is another way to achieve this which gives up more useful results. Down at the bottom here is an option to use a step table. This is specifically designed to make it easy to generate useful rhythmic patterns. How it works is like this. If the step table is selected, then the step levels are chosen at random, and the sequence is generated from the Euclidean values you have set, and it's stored in memory. When that sequence comes to an end, and a new sequence cycle begins, it replaces the one that was stored previously. So with no repeats, this will just sound like a normal Euclidean sequence with random levels. But if you have repeats set to more than one, then the stored sequence will be repeated until the repeats are done at which point a new sequence is generated and stored to memory again. This is why you don't need so many sequence steps. If you want a 64-step sequencer, you just set the repeats to 4 and the steps to 8, and use the step table to reseed the sequence after every 64 steps. So let's hear and see how this works on this oscillator.
Now let's move on and look at using this in a more musical context. Here I've set up a Euclidean sequence to control the cutoff of the two-pole bandpass filter. I'm using the step table feature and I'm using four repeats and the step time is one step for every one-eighth note. If we change the step and fill values manually, you can hear the change in the pattern of modulation. Of course, we can make this happen generatively by adding a range to the steps and the fill. I've turned up the modulation level here to make it more audible. In a real mix, I'd probably want to tone it down a bit. If you want more complexity, it's easy to combine two sequences. You just use a control junction to add the two together and use that as a source for the modulation target. So here's the same basic pad as before, but with two step sequences working together. By having different sequence lengths for each and different offsets, complex shifting modulation patterns are very easy to find. <laughs> If I crank up the level of control, you can probably hear the pattern more clearly, but it's a bit in your face by then, so I'll turn it back down a bit. So there we have it. The LFO just got a feature boost and evolved into a generative step sequence of control signals. So, once again, it's time to get off YouTube and go make some music.